Hi, this is Chidi. Welcome again to Ask Dr. Chidi. I am very excited you can join me today. We're going to be talking about managing expectations part two. And last time we talked about it extensively, but there were some things that we didn't address. So I'm hoping we'll address it this time. And I have a surprise for you. So join me as we have this chat. about managing expectations and we address the Cinderella complex that sometimes when we go into marriage we're going with maybe unrealistic expectations just because of how we were brought up and the stories we've been told and the stories we saw on TV and we thought marriage is something that is not but we talked about these few these things and we talked about how to manage them and come to terms with what we have to work with Today, we're going to be adding on to that. We're going to be talking about it from a biblical point of view. And I think it's very important that we have this session. So today, I'm going to be inviting Pastor to come and have this, join us in this chat. I think it's going to be great. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Excellent. So I was thinking, I'm sure you watched that video, Managing oh, yeah. Expectation. Br brilliant. Thinking. Beautiful. I'm sure you have something to add. Yeah, you know, we did a very good job. Very, very good job. And we've been getting beautiful feedback on um, that show. And I think um, what we just needed to top it up with is. Um, we believe that um, God can do all things and His um, power is not limited at all. God is limitless and we believe that. So having a buoyant expectation, it's, uh, it's not off the cuff. It's, it's something that everybody should, you know, have and aspire to. But like Jesus said in Luke that um, if a man wants to build a tower, a house, he must first sit down and do a count the cost. Count the cost. So that's something I believe every lady and every guy that wants to get married should also sit down and count the cost. And you know that um, you also talked about, or you are talking about your series, The Rules of Attraction that what you expect what you believe will come to you so having that high expectation is beautiful that is one aspect of it having faith that what you want what you believe will come to you then there's something else like some you yes, believe that one should do working on you because you can't attract what you are not so I believe you should make that investment in yourself so you can attract your ideal partner. So let's not say you are, let me just use classes to, to explain what I mean. Let's say you are a class C person on the scale of A to F, a class C person, and you want a class A person. What I believe you should do is you should invest in your class C and up it up to class A. So that person you are believing for your ideal spouse or partner who be attracted to you because your ideal spouse or partner I believe should be a class A person and she or he will not be attracted to a class C or class E or class F person. So you can be a class F and you are believing for a class A. God is limitless but it will still be unfair to the class A person. You know if God does that so what you should do is to work on yourself you mightn't have attained class A but once you are constantly making investment 
in yourself and aspiring to be a class A person, then you've kicked started that process. That's what I believe. You count the cost. So you can't just be a, an F person and expect a class A person. So as we do that, I believe you should work on yourself. As you have your high expectation or whatever expectation of your ideal spouse, work on yourself. Don't be dormant. Don't be at the same place. Let somebody meet you in the next three months, six months, and will notice that you've made a great leap higher than where you were from. Invest in yourself. Get a degree. Work on yourself. Get new knowledge. Get new skills. Keep, keep, keep working on yourself so you can attract your ideal partner. That's what I believe. That's one thing we should, um, I think we should add to that rule of attraction. So we are not saying, um, I, I believe that's one thing we should add to the managing expectations, rather. So we don't believe you should have mean or low expectations. No, that's not what we are saying. We believe you should have high expectations for your ideal partner because the Bible says that he will grant us what? Our heart desires, the desires of our heart. So, but the desires, the desires of your heart you also match your person so you can easily attract that person to you. The other thing is, don't forget that it doesn't end at marriage. Everything doesn't end. Say you and your spouse are class B. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end there. You can keep improving yourself in marriage. Exactly. You can exactly. keep improving yourself, keep improving yourself and become a class A. So kind of A plus. Exactly. So maybe when you meet and when you're getting married, your husband is not able to do so and so and so. And these are the things you would have wanted him to do. There's still room for growth. Yeah. And if the two of you walk at it, at some point you he would begin to meet all those expectations mm -hmm. and you'd be able to meet all his expectations. So marriage isn't the end. It is still a process. It is a growing process. It's a journey. And your aim is to improve and improve and improve. You don't say, oh, because he married and he, this is how he is, he'll never change. Don't give up. Keep working on it, especially those of us who are married and maybe things, you know, your expectations seem like they've been cut short. Don't worry. As long as the two of you agree to work on it and work together, you would keep growing and you begin to meet those expectations that you expect. And you know, we usually teach couples and newlyweds and those that want to get married to have a project at every point in their relationship that they are pursuing. And we usually talk about have a building project, to buy property, to do this, to do that. I don't think we lay emphasis as we should on intellectual project you know have a project to go for this course learn this get this degree and be better just don't grow in physical assets also grow in intellectual assets there's something that's also um, overlook emotional growth is also important and maturity that's the right word also set those targets for yourself to be more emo emotionally uh, mature, to handle the needs of your spouse the best way you can. You also grow in it. So, as you said, it's open ended. Not just class A, it doesn't end in class A. It can be A, A, and so on and so forth till death or Jesus meets you. Keep growing. There's something called self improvement. Constantly engage on self improvement. Like I said earlier, don't be caught where you were three, six, three, six months ago. Add something, either intellectually, add something emotionally. And as you grow, you become a better mate for your spouse. I think the last thing we should add, so we'll make this video too long, is um, the point about which you made, and I really love that point you made, is that at the end of the day, your expectation should not be of your spouse. Your expectation should be of God. Even if your spouse to be or your spouse currently is not where you desire or you want him or her to be, go to God. That's where faith comes. 
set that high expectation, believing God. And as you go praying that there will be improvement, there will be a change, that your spouse will become better. Never cease to pray for your spouse. That is one prayer point that is that will never, never end. So you constantly pray for your spouse and put your expectation on God. Don't put your expectation on your spouse. Hold God, then watch your spouse change. Don't hold your spouse change. I don't like this. And you and you go feeling down, feeling sad whenever things don't turn out the way you want you want it to turn out. Whenever those um, emotional comfort you're expecting to come from your spouse don't come. Go back to God. Hold God. Say, God, you're the one I'm holding on to. I want this, 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 this to change. I want my husband to love me this way, that way, that way. I want my wife to be this, that, 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 and that. So hold on to God. Your expectation should be of the Lord, not of your spouse. Do you have another thing to add? Yes, I have something else to add, which we should have added earlier. I think uh, you touched on it um, somewhere. And that is being aware, being sensitive to the needs of your spouse. Yeah. Because it's the only way you will know which direction to improve. Exactly. So if, I mean, if you don't know what your spouse is expecting of you, mm-hmm. this is also where communication comes in. Yeah. If you don't know what your spouse is expecting you to do, if you don't know what the person is expecting of you, mm-hmm. you wouldn't know how best to meet it. Yeah. You wouldn't even know how to improve it, even mm-hmm. if you want to. So communication is essential, we're back to it. And then being sensitive to the needs of you. See the things that make your spouse upset or unhappy or complain and things like that. And then you try your best to begin to meet those things. And I think we will be happier. Oh yeah, I believe so. I believe so. That is brilliant. Remember, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Leave it as a comment on this video. Send us a message. Whatever question you have, even beyond what we are teaching, there's something you would like to, us to talk about. Just send a question and we'll make a video on that. Remember, subscribe to this channel and share this video and invite your friends also to subscribe. See you again on the next one. Bye. Please remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum O.